This week on Small Boat Big Ocean TV, we get down and dirty as we continue the bottom rebuild of our Cape Horn 24 offshore. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Small Boat Big Ocean TV is brought to you by Howie T Sport Fishing, Bob K Marine, and Salt Weather, the ultimate marine forecast app. Everybody and thanks for tuning in to Small Boat Big Ocean TV this week. We're picking up where we left off last week, uh, where we had our Cape Horn 24 offshore bottom blasted to remove the old bottom paint and revealed a bunch of blisters. So we had to do a lot of sanding to get the bottom ready for the next step. Once the bottom was thoroughly sanded, the next step was to go in and fill in any imperfections caused by the blasting or by the sand. To do this, we used 3M's Marine Premium Filler. The reason we chose this was it's very flexible, it flexes with the hull, but creates a good firm bond with any exposed fiberglass or sanded surfaces. The 3M Premium Filler comes with a cream hardener. Uh, the reason you add this is because it allows the epoxy to set more quickly, so you have to be careful and that you don't want to wait too long to apply uh, and you don't want to be left over with a lot of material uh, or else it'll harden on you and you won't be able to apply it. Just to offer some advice, never create a batch with more material than you can use in five to seven minutes or else you run the risk of that epoxy hardening before you get a chance to apply it and you end up wasting a lot of material. This filling stage is one of the most important simply for the fact that you've got to get putty epoxy into every little nook and cranny, any place where water could seep in. You want to make sure you have that filled uh, or you run the risk of having some trouble when it comes to the fairing process, finding some gaps and having to go back and fill in again. So pay extra special attention to any little hole crevice anything that needs to be filled take your time and do it right This is one of the more time consuming parts of the process simply because you want to make sure, as I said before, you get every little exposed piece of fiberglass or hole uh, or crack or remnants of a blister filled in um, so that when you go ahead and sand it, everything's nice and smooth uh, and you can get that barrier coat applied without having to go back uh, and re it and patch up some more holes. So again, just to repeat myself, make sure you, you take your time doing this. Um, but it, it'll save you a lot in the long run. Bob K. Marine in Spring City, PA is your one-stop shop for all marine services. From bass boats to bow riders, two and four stroke outboards to large block inboards. Our certified staff can repair just about anything. Bob K. Marine also offers electronics installation, winterization and shrink wrap, plus fiberglass and gel coat repair. Visit Bob K. Marine today for all your marine service needs. Welcome back to Small Boat Big Ocean TV. Now that we have all our epoxy putty applied, all our crevices and cracks filled in, we need to go back uh, to the sander and fair everything smooth and prepare it for the first coat of barrier coat. Another nice thing about the 3M Premium Filler 
is it is very easy to sand. It doesn't take a lot of sander pressure to create a nice smooth surface. Uh, so you can kind of take your time, save some energy, and not have to press too hard on the sander and let the uh, actual uh, tool do its work. Once I got to the waterline and chine area, I switched to a DA sander simply because it was a lot easier to manipulate it in that area. Now that we have the putty applied and sanded, we went ahead and thoroughly cleaned the hole with lacquer thinner to make sure we have no dust particles or sanded materials, uh, anything that would prohibit a clean bond between the barrier coat and the surface. Now that we have a nice thoroughly cleaned hole, it's time to mix up our barrier coat. It's a two-part epoxy. We chose Pet It Protect simply because we're going to be a bottom painting with Pet It Vivid and they recommend using Pet It Protect uh, to create a nice secure bond. Today we were applying the barrier coat. The temperature was right around 70 degrees and Pet It recommends a 15 minute induction time after mixing the uh, epoxy resin with the barrier coat. I uh, just let it sit there so that the two liquids can properly mix. For the barrier coat application we were using a 3 8 inch nap roller. As I mentioned earlier, the temp was right around 70 degrees on the day we applied and Pettit recommended two and a half hour wait time between the first and second barrier coat application. Salt Weather is the ultimate green forecast app. With Salt Weather, you get forecasts from four different models on one screen. Chlorophyll and sea surface temperatures. Waypoints. Distance measuring. Plus a whole lot more at a fraction of the cost of other services. Welcome back to Small Boat Big Ocean TV. Well, two and a half hours has elapsed and we're now on to our second coat of Pettit Protect Barrier Coat. And we decided to go with an alternate color so that we can make sure we have a thorough coverage of both coats. Very important to pay attention to the timing of your second coat to when you will be applying your first coat of bottom paint. There is a certain amount of time that you have to work with, so plan your day accordingly. Because of this critical timing, I didn't actually start painting the first bottom coat of Vivid until 9 p.m. If you miss that window, you have to go back and sand the entire second coat of Barrier Coat before you can apply the Pettit Vivid. Because of this critical timing, I made sure that the second coat of barrier coat was tacky to touch, which is necessary for the bottom paint to properly bond to the barrier coat. At this point I was starting to see light at the end of the tunnel and it, what you notice is I did white from the water line to the chine and then I mixed in a little bit of blue with the Pettit uh, Vivid White to get my bottom color that would be everything under the chine.
The nice thing about Pettit Pivot was once I got the first coat of bottom paint uh, on and bonded to the barrier coat, there was no amount of time that I had to squeeze in in order to get the second coat of Vivid on. So I was able to take my time between first and second coats of bottom paint. So there you have it, a complete rework of our Cape Horn 24 Offshore. As I said in episode one, was it the absolute professional way? No. But do I feel confident that we have a fully sealed and secure hole uh, after addressing the blisters we found with blasting? Absolutely. That's going to do it for this episode and the bottom rework of our Cape Horn 24 Offshore. I want to thank everybody for their interest and for tuning in, and we'll see you next episode. This episode of Small Boat Big Ocean TV has been brought to you by Howie T. Sport Fishing, Bob K. Marine, and Salt Weather, the ultimate marine forecast app.